Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we're diving into an exciting project that combines my love of tech with a bit of green thumb magic, a self-watering plant system. Whether you're a tech enthusiast, a budding programmer, or just someone looking to automate their plant care, this project has something for everyone. Let's get into it. Before I started studying software engineering, I spent three years learning networking in college. While I learned a lot about configuring and managing networks, I didn't get that much exposure to programming or web development. This project is an opportunity to bridge that gap and expand my skill set. First, I needed a planter and a reservoir. I decided to use a planter box design because it looks much better than using a random box and it gives the setup a more professional and aesthetically pleasing appearance. Since I'm not that creative, I found a planter box design online, I sliced it in Cura and printed it on my Neptune 4 Max. This beast of a 3D printer handed the large print with ease and took about a day and a bit. For the water reservoir, I initially thought about using a water tower, but since this setup isn't going to be permanent, I decided a box would be more practical. This way, I avoided wasting a Raspberry Pi on a non-permanent project. I designed the reservoir myself in Tinkercad, ensuring the walls and the base were thick enough to hold water securely without wasting any filament. After slicing it in Cura, I printed it in about 13 hours. It was fascinating to watch it come to life layer by layer. Now, here are the electronic components I'm going to be using for this project. My Raspberry Pi 4 kit, I got this from Canakit for about $110, and it includes a Raspberry Pi 4 with 4 gigs of RAM, a 32, gra uh, a 32 gigabyte micro SD card, a power supply, a case, and about a couple other essentials. This kit was a great starting point because it includes everything you need to get up and running with the Raspberry Pi. Then I have my Elegoo 4 channel DC 5 volt relay module. I purchased this for about 11 bucks on Amazon. And honestly, I got this from Elegoo because I knew I had three of their, two of their 3D printers and they are honestly a good company. This relay would allow a low power signal from the Raspberry Pi to control a high power device like the water pump. And yeah. The water pump I got in a set of four from Amazon for about $13. These submersible pumps are perfect for this project as they can handle the small scale watering needs of a planter box. Finally, we have my moisture sensor. This came in a set of three from Amazon for $15 and these are more reliable when compared to other resistive sensors. Oh, and one more thing was my ADC module. This is the ADS7830 and it came with the starter kit from Freeno for about $54. And this kit has a bunch of different components that are good for projects. So the ADC module is necessary because the Raspberry Pi doesn't have built-in analog inputs. So it converts the analog signals from the moisture sensor into digital data that the Raspberry Pi can read. Let's start with the wiring. I connected the relay to the Raspberry Pi and it allowed the Raspberry Pi to control the pump, which is a higher voltage, as I said before. Then I wired the water pump to the relay and it looks like everything was good here with all the wiring. To test the setup, I used two jugs, one filled with water and one empty. And then I wrote a simple Python script to control the relay and move water from one jug to the other. The script turned the relay on for five seconds to activate the pump and then turn it off for five seconds. And it repeated it indefinitely. This obviously shows the pump is working and the relay is working. So we don't have any issues more down and down the line. Next, I connected the capacitive moisture sensor to the ADC module. And as I said before, it converts the digital sig the analog signal to the digital signal of the Raspberry Pi. After connecting the sensor though, I ran into a couple errors. The first one was an externally managed environment error. To resolve this, I created and activated a virtual environment to manage the dependencies. This isolated the environment so that the required packages didn't interfere with the system-wide Python installation and allowed for easier management. Next, I discovered that the ITUC interface was not enabled on the Pi by default. So I went into the config and enabled the interface and everything was good here. After troubleshooting, I confirmed the moisture sensor was providing accurate readings by testing it with the module and some dry soil. I made sure that I got a value from the soil dry and then I looked at the value when it was wet and noticed that there was a difference. So obviously there was one value for wet and one value for dry. 
using the values, I wrote a script that would read the moisture levels from the sensor and display them, ensuring that everything was working correctly. The final script checks the moisture level every hour. If the moisture level is between a certain value, it turns on the pump for five seconds, waits an hour, and then checks the value again. This cycle ensures that the plant is watered only when necessary, preventing overwatering and maintaining optimal soil moisture. Finally, I started to work on the web development. First, I created a basic HTML website that displayed the moisture level along with a timestamp. The basic HTML looked very ugly, but at least it had the information that was needed. I used Chart.js to visualize the data and enhance the interface with CSS to make it more user-friendly and visually appealing. I created a Python script to read the moisture levels, log the data, control the water pump, and set an HTML template and CSS appearance using the JSS for visualization. Finally, I activated the virtual environment, I ran the Flask application, accessed the web interface to make sure that everything was working okay. And honestly, it worked perfectly. And there you have it, a fully functional sort of self-watering plant system. This project has been an incredible learning experience, helping me develop my programming, web development, and problem solving skills. I learned how to integrate different systems from the hardware components like the sensors and relays to the software solutions, which is the Python scripting and web development. I plan to do more software and networking projects in the future to help build my resume to get a good co-op. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more tech adventures. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.